Here are a couple of examples that use the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process or algorithm. The first one is asking us to find an orthonormal basis for the column space of this matrix A here. If all we wanted was a basis for the column space, we could do what we did in a, another example that I did recently, where we just take the matrix A, row reduce it, identify the pivot columns, and there's a basis. So in this case, I can see I've got a pivot here, here, and here. So columns one, two, and four are the pivot columns of the row reduced matrix. And that means that the same columns one, two, and four are the pivot columns of A. And so there's my basis. But I want an orthonormal basis. So an orthonormal set is a set that is orthogonal and unit vectors. The normal part there means unit vectors. So what we need to do is take this set and orthogonalize it, and we'll use the Gram-Schmidt process for that. So we can start by just calling these vectors u1, u2, u3, as I've got down here. And then we get the first one for free. In other words, we'll just let v1 equal u1. And then to get v2, I'm going to take u2 and subtract from it the orthogonal projection of u2 onto v1. Here's the formula for it in the Euclidean inner product space where the inner product is a dot product. So I've got u2 here, the dot products here, in fact, all the dot products that we'll need in this example, as well as some norms down here. I've got on a separate page just to keep it from getting so cluttered. So here's all the dot product calculations if you want to refer to these. And then as well, I've got the norm calculations here. So these dot product calculations, the numerator and the denominator just coincidentally are both a six. So this is just scaled by one here. Do the subtraction and I get V2. And then for V3, I take U3 and I have to subtract two projections. I project U3 onto V1 and then I project it also onto V2. So here are the formulas for that. Again, the dot products do the arithmetic and there's V3. So if I put V1, V2, and V3 in a set, there is my orthogonal basis. So it's orthogonal. It's not orthonormal yet. These are not unit vectors. If you take the norm of any of these, you're not going to get one. But that's easy enough to fix. We just normalize each of these vectors. So I'll call W1 V1 divided by its norm. Likewise for W2 and W3. Again, you can go back, rewind the video, and look at those calculations. You can see the norm of V1 and the norm of V2, root 6 and root the respectively. So here's W1, W2, and W3 here. So the norm of V3 is 1 over root 3, so we end up multiplying by root 3. And here is my orthonormal basis for the column space of A. Another example that we can do is to find a QR factorization of A. So here's the matrix A. It's not the same as the matrix in the first example, but you can see here that I've got columns 1, 2, and 4 included in the uh, new matrix A, and I did not include columns 3 and 5. So here's my new matrix A. If I row reduce it, of course I get a pivot in every column. These are all pivot columns. And a basis for the column space is the same. It's the same column space as the other matrix, even though it's not the same matrix. And so to do the QR factorization, what I need is an orthonormal basis for the column space of A. Well, we just did that. So here's my orthogonal basis. Just look at the previous example, and you can see the steps there. And then here's the orthonormal basis that we just got. So now all we need to do is use the QR factorization theorem to find Q and R. Q is defined to be the matrix whose columns are these orthonormal basis vectors. So you just take these vectors and put them into the matrix Q. Then we have this formula for R. R is Q transpose A. So here's the transpose of Q. Here's A. Just multiply them together on a calculator or a computer. And then here's R. You can check your work by multiplying QR. So take the matrix Q that you just got up here. Take R, multiply them, and you should get A the original matrix. And we do. So that's confirmation that we did the calculations correctly. And indeed, this is a QR factorization of A.